there, you can see Emmanuel Escobar, rising star in the sea of Latin American fighters. Emmanuel Escobar was all business at the weigh-ins yesterday ahead of his pro debut here tonight. Seven and one as an amateur with three stoppages. He was welcomed into the MMA Colombia family and has been sharpening his tools ever since then. Long-term goals include an addition to the UFC roster. John, that journey continues here tonight. Yeah, and you, you touched on the intensity, and, and we're seeing it right there. I mean, just the focus. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, it's infectious, you know what I mean? You can just see it. You can feel that energy that he brings in there. So uh, we'll see if he can deliver. Like I said, an impressive amateur uh, career. You know, kind of established himself as a real prospect in the area. And now he's got an organization like Empire MMA to to use, you know, to make those statements and to get himself to the next level where he ultimately envisions himself. And talk about the nitty gritty, the accomplishments that this 23-year-old has amassed include Tapology's 18th ranked amateur flyweight in Latin America, as well as the 15th ranked amateur bantamweight, two divisions, top 20 in both. That is, that's a statement that speaks for itself. It really does. And shows that he's got options available to him moving forward. One option but, is not cutting the lettuce. I mean, he's got some good hair upstairs. No, man, you put together some braids like that, you keep it. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Yeah, whoever put his braids together deserves some credit as well. Fight night bonus. You know, we talk about a lot of these young athletes, you know, the, the, the athletic advantages that they have, but the sacrifices that they make as well. I mean, this is your youth, this is your adolescence, that you are sidelining in favor of combat sports success and glory. Absolutely. You're not going out partying. We take it to the Burger King tail of the tape. Medellin versus Bogota in this matchup between Emmanuel Escobar and Jonathan Garcia in Signates. 23 on one side, 33 on the other. Another big age gap, 10 years. We'll say Garcia has the advantages in the reach and the height. Esquina Azul. Thirty-three years young is the Colombian Jonathan Insignatis. He's stepping in on short notice against Emmanuel Escobar. He's the head coach of Anonyme Armed Club, always serving underprivileged youth in Colombia, ensuring that they're developing healthy habits and training and being disciplined instead of becoming wrapped up in their vices. Despite the wealth of experience and being a head coach, Insignatis makes the walk as a professional for the very first time tonight, John. It's pretty cool. I mean, A, the mission that he's out there supporting. I mean, that's incredible, right? I, I think, you know, as, as a father, you know, anytime you hear about people working with troubled youth and trying to give them better opportunities, because there are so many kids out there that, man, unfortunately, just through circumstance, you know, don't have opportunities that maybe others do, and they find themselves wrapped up in some troublesome opportunities. And, and this is something that uh, this man is looking to eradicate. And so that's spectacular to stuff. But then, you know, as you said, stepping in on short notice, you know, to say, hey, I'm not just going to talk the talk. I'm not just going to tell you guys, here's what you should be doing and here's how it should be going. I'll walk the walk, too. I'll step in there and do that. I mean, that's a great message to send to the youth that he's working with. Definition of leading by example. And you think 10 years physically, athletically might, might favor Escobar, but the experience, the knowledge, the awareness inside of techniques, defensively, offensively, I feel like that would really tip the scales in Jonathan Insignatis' favor. That's usually where it balances out. I mean, when you see these type of age gap differences, especially when you're talking about somebody that's like 23 years old. I mean, if you're talking about somebody that's, you know, maybe a 35 versus a 45-year-old or something like that, you may not see the same things. But usually that younger 23-year-old is going to have, you know, significant kind of speed and athleticism and just that youthful exuberance. But as you mentioned, the counter to that is experience. The counter to that is, you know, the more developed muscular structure. And uh, he steps in there with a little leaping slam. 33, but this guy looks physically in his prime. We take it back to the tail of the tape, brought to you by Burger King. You can see age difference as well as height and reach. Slight typo on the record, but we'll look at that. <laughs> Graphics guy's been busy, man. He's, he's doing a lot, lot going on. Doing a lot going on. It's the same guy that does camera, too. <laughs> the man's splitting his time. <laughs> Emmanuel Escobar. Held on that one. Like that. That's how we got to say it. It's like Joe Martinez. Who are you? I got this. Para este combate, tendremos como referee al señor Andres Gonzalez. Insignaris versus Escobar. Look at the intensity the expression of Emmanuel Escobar. This is not a guy that you want to take lightly. 
Good touch of gloves, show of respect, continues that sportsmanship. Fired up and ready to go. I didn't notice we have two bald referees. It's the style then. The sign of the times. Touch of gloves there once again. Insignaris takes the center. Escobar. A little pep in his step, John. Yeah, again, that youthful exuberance out there is the 23-year-old. Light on the feet, dancing around a little bit. Kind of the longer, leaner frame. But a nice opening leg kick there from Insignatis. That was quick, too. I mean, the speed at which he unloaded it. Emmanuel's got his work in that one. But returns by his own leg kick. So he definitely was targeting that calf region. Insignaris showing a couple feints. Still really maintaining that center quite effectively, but the second leg kick from Emmanuel Escobar. Oh, catches his attention. Bit of a clash right here, John. Yeah, opportunity there. Wasn't able to capitalize on the caught kick, and now you see knees being driven up the middle there from Insignaris. Big moment here. Can you get a takedown? What happens? Instead, they separate. That's where the head coach of Jonathan Insignaris presents itself. Beautiful awareness in that situation. Then Chris combination on Escobar. Yeah, nice combination. Escobar, to his credit, swung back as well. Look at the spinning hook. He just misses there. Fantastic. Hey, 33, just a number. This guy's fighting like he's in his 20s. I love it. But, you know, we do have to... Oh, oh big knee. That caught Escobar's attention. Yes, it did. Insignaris has, has really shown some success with those knees. Escobar's really got to pay attention to that moving forward. Big kick right there. Escobar return. Have to also, again, consider the short notice nature of Insignaris' presence here. How is that going to affect the cardio, the stamina, as this fight wages forward? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Big exchange there. We talked a lot about it early. We've had so many uh, nice finishes here that we haven't talked about lately. But remember, if you're just joining us, the altitude is a serious issue here. So stepping in on short notice, you do wonder. 80, all that gets amplified. 8,600 feet versus the more commonly known Denver, which is only 5,600. And it's crazy that you would say in, in this comparison that Denver's only right. that high, right? Because exactly. <laughs> Elbow up top there for Insignaris. Good reversal by Escobar, really maintaining control with that lock, but Insignaris just seemingly a bit wiser in these positions, I would say. Oh, mouthpiece fell out briefly. Deep breath right there from Jonathan. Yes, it was. Separation we reset halfway through round number one. Escobar. Oh! Emmanuel laughs that one off, but boy. That one could have been a show ender. Yeah, it really was. It was that nice high kick and then same side punch behind it. Nice combination. I wanted to set up the spinning stuff there. <laughs> pulled back on it. It's always the go-to when your gas tank is maybe starting to fail. Start throwing spinning stuff. Might as well. Well, I tell you what, I think, you know, we talked about the intensity of Escobar, but I think he's learned to respect Insignaris and a couple straight punches land there as well. An extended combination. That's what I like to see, the one-two, one-two, pushing Escobar backwards. But he meant, oh! Blocked it, but you gotta it. think the bleed through potentially is there. It's more of a UFC term. <laughs> Wild to see here. Continued aggression with those punches, straight shots down the middle, landing over and over. You see Escobar just a little hesitant at times, pulling back on those combinations. Ooh. There's that nasty B up the middle there as well. It's almost common practice in a lot of striking classes to conclude with a punch, right? right? Whether it be a jab or a cross, off the break, that's the time to strike. That's the time where the defenses might be at their lowest. Emmanuel Escobar, kind of hands low when he's trying to back out. Yeah, and he just to be honest with you, Escobar just doesn't look comfortable right now. I think he's a little bit surprised in what he's seen from Insignaris, stepping in with the knee there as well. And Escobar just like he's having a little bit of trouble finding his rhythm as, as to exactly where to attack. The expression has definitely changed. One minute remaining in round number one. Huge opening frame for the head coach, Jonathan Insignaris. Short notice, no notice, long notice, don't matter for the head coach. I think being cautious with his pace here, right? Not wanting to expend too much energy, understanding the factors that he's facing. But there's a nice combination again, just the left, it's a right hand right behind it. Straight punches down the middle. Good head movement, too, by Escobar. I mean, avoiding the major players of that combo. Certainly going to save his durability. That's a winging punch right there. 
Yeah, Escobar was able to move out of the way of that big right hand. But again, he's moving out of the way well, but what is he offering in reply? Where's the big counter? Just took a right to the chin there as well. Good poker face on one, Emmanuel Escobar. Really the damage well, but a huge opening round for the head coach himself, Jonathan Insignares. Yeah, phenomenal work. As I said, you know, stringing together combinations, kind of attacking on the offbeat. Those knees were very successful along the way as well. A lot of nice work here. If you take a look at the replays here from that overhand, oh. there was it, those knees, and he throws the punches behind it. He's always finishing with something else. Really great work thus far from Vincent Norris. You know, it's interesting because Escobar is also doing a couple things pretty well, right? The lateral movement is there. He is returning fire, landing a couple of his own shots, but there's a there's a step behind that Escobar is operating at. That's it. If I'm in Escobar's corner right now, I'm telling him, look, man, we need you to be the one attacking. We need you to attack on your rhythm, not on his, because right now Escobar is handling things naturally. He seems to be not breathing too heavily over there. You take a look at Escobar. Still got the intensity, maybe a little frustration there as well. Things not going the way he wanted to. We'll see if Insignaris can keep the pace up. Again, if, if I'm uh, if I'm in the opposite corner with Escobar, I'm saying, hey, we need you to turn the heat up. Let's see you being the one set the tone. Round two of Escobar and Insignaris. Time to put the pedal to the metal for one Emmanuel Escobar. Again, seven and one amateur record with three stoppages. This kid knows how to win. Yes, he does. See how he deals with some adversity here in the professional ranks. Big combo right there from Jonathan to open round number two. That's a nice jab from Escobar. That's it, you know, you, you touched on his head movement, you touched on his lateral movement. Escobar is moving well, but he needs to get the offense going. He's got kind of like that dancing movement, you know what I mean? He's got a routine in there, Jonathan. He's got the rhythmic movements too, light on the feet. But again, needs to pull the trigger a little bit more. Nice face there, front kick out. A bit of a smile right there yeah. from Escobar. Now Ooh. he's feeling it a little bit. Lightning quick right overhand. Could have spelled defeat for Insignaris, but head coach knows what to do. Clint Chantry, Escobar evades. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps teasing that spinning stuff. Oh, that leg kick hurt right as Escobar was trying to throw a combination. You know, we talk about that investment paying dividends. Ooh. Yeah, Escobar had one of his own there as well. Again, it means light, moving very, very well. But Insignaris not wasting any energy, not wasting any movement. You know, it'll be interesting to see Emmanuel Escobar put Insignaris on the back foot, maybe pressure the older man, try and get him against the cage. I agree. And I think that's what he's got to do. He's got to be on the front foot. He's not doing that right now. You think? Oh, oh, spinning attempt oh, oh, oh. by Escobar. Just short he's, on that one. He's trying things, John. I like that. And you got to. I just, I would like to see him move forward and, and attack a little bit more. Goes good leg kick. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in round number two. Escobar. Oh! Head coach Short briefly stumbled. Insignaris. Who knows how? Popped right back up and landed a right hand there. So a short shot dropped him for a second. Now he's taking a couple deep breaths as you, as you take a look and see if he can clear the cobwebs. He did pop back up pretty quickly. See this Escobar way. pointing at him, and all right, I find say we got ourselves a fight. There's a lot of time left here in round number two. Probably the moment where Escobar should really start putting the gas in. You know, you, you briefly heard him, oh, and now Insignaris is opening up. Yeah, I mean, that's the first real successful moment you've had in terms of offensive striking attacks, but you got to build on that. Instead, he's allowed Insignaris to really kind of catch his own rhythm. Two minutes, 40. Again, we simply don't know the health of Jonathan Insignaris. Maybe he's still briefly stumbled. I mean, head coach got a good poker face, but there was a stumble right there. Yeah, Escobar just missed on a huge right hand here. He's doing a better job of trying to set the tone. And Insignaris trying not to waste too much movement. We, we understand what he's up against on short notice, but he is starting to take a few deep breaths, as you, as you see there. Highly touted, decorated amateur. Emmanuel Escobar facing some serious adversity from the longtime head coach tonight. When you talk about, when you talk about tests, I mean, this is one that you would want to pass. A head coach of a gym, if you can get a, a win over him in your debut, it kind of sets the scene. Absolutely. As you said, you know, the 10-year difference, you're not fighting another kid. You're fighting a truly a grown man, you know, that's been around the game for a while. So, 
Ooh, big shot by Insignares, millimeters away. One minute, 40 remaining in round number two. Again, common consensus is Escobar needs to go just a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah, a minute and a half remaining, he's starting to have some success here. Insignares answering back though. When Escobar does uh, press forward, he does have some success rate. It's just when he tries to counter on Insignares, that's when it doesn't go his way. So I'd like to see him continue to be first. That left leg of Emmanuel Escobar. Gotta wonder where it's at with all the damage accumulated. Oh, nice right hand there. Now you're seeing Insignares take a couple deep breaths, though. That was a labored return to the center. Oh, yeah, you've certainly seen that. Mouth wide open, taking a few deep breaths in there. That short notice, you knew it was going to set in at some point. And now is the question, can Escobar capitalize? Nice strikes to change there. Escobar still looks very light on his feet. Bottom Whoa! Bit, misses on the spinning kick. But he's trying it. He had to give one back, John. He had to try his own. Oh. Largely blocked there, but still. Oh, oh. Knee attempt he by knee misses. But I like it. I like it. Mix up with Oh, big shot to the body there. Oh, the cigar is teeing off. Escobar trying to circle out, but really eating some shots. Closing moments of round two. Ten seconds left. Once again, Insignar is largely in the driver's seat. Oh! Brief stumble. Yeah, a little stumble there at the bell, kind of after the bell. I'm sure if that was by way of a strike from Escobar or maybe just off balance. It seemed like he was just trying to pull back because they were throwing strikes right there and he kind of found himself off balance. I wouldn't score that a knockdown. Just a little bit how the judge would feel about it. <laughs> Here's some of the highlights from round number two. Front kick right there from Escobar. But again, just not enough in terms of the, the striking numbers, I would say. That's the problem, is the amount of volume. So, we'll see. That's an interesting round there. Insignaris has some nice flourish at the end there. He really did, scored with some nice shots there. It's gonna be interesting to see where the gas tank is. I, 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 again, I wanna see Escobar turn things up here in round number three. Really increase the output. You can see right now. I mean. But, you know, big difference between what Insignaris looked like after round one and what he looks like after round two. The fatigue is setting in. You saw the gesture from his corner there, talking about the knee once again. He had a lot of success with the knee early. We'll see if he goes back to that more often. But uh, some deep breaths there, kind of leaning against the cage. <laughs> I mean, Woo! some equal deep breaths from Emmanuel Escobar as well. I mean, these guys have expended the gas tanks of considerable degree, but it's time to shine, Emmanuel Escobar. Top 15, top 18. You've got five minutes to prove it. Yeah, if Escobar thought he was getting uh, something easy here tonight, that is not the case. Flashes out that front kick, just missed. Again, on the back foot, the majority of this fight. There's that knee from Insignaris. If it lands at this stage, who knows what that could do to Escobar. Yeah, just missed on that one. Insignaris, to his credit, exhausted as we know he is, walking forward, although Escobar scores with the counter left. Big kick from Insignaris, tries that check hook, not there. Escobar circles out, but again, doesn't take the center, doesn't try and reverse the pressure and pace. It just reminds me a lot of like early stages Jorge Masvidal, who was so comfortable kind of fighting off the back foot and countering, but it cost him on some split decisions along the way because judges like to see that aggression and that forward movement. With that ally Aquinta fight, first one that comes to mind, Insignaris rushes forward with it. Bit of offense right there. Four minutes remaining in round number three. Escobar needs to get going. He wants to be victorious. Takes a bit of a shot right there. Yes, he does. Gotta love the cupping on the back of Insignaris as well. Does that help? I, I have no idea. It always looks weird, though. I'll tell you what. People believe in it, but it's just odd to me. They just walk <laughs> in there they like a polka dot poster on your back. A teenage mutant ninja turtle <laughs> shell. Kind of wild. Each guy colliding with kicks in the center. Three minutes, 30 remains. Big stiff jab right there from Insignaris. Escobar just retreating on the back foot, pedaling away. Yeah, I mean, he's very comfortable, clearly. It's not like he's looking for a takedown or anything like that. He's, he's, he's comfortable in this moment. But you got to return the fire. Insignaris again. 
the one setting the tone, the one walking forward, the one that's pushing the pace over and over. And unsurprisingly, the technique stays tight. It stays, you know, pretty close to the body in those moments. You see Emmanuel Escobar kind of wildly wing the hands, but Insignaris keeps it all inside, just speaks to the 10 year difference. Yeah, it's, it's just very efficient in everything he does. It may not be big, crazy, wild movements, but because of that, it's not big, crazy, wild energy expenditures either. Escobar goes high again, blocked. Lots of colliding anytime they're in the pocket. 2.30 remains midway through round number three. Emmanuel Escobar gradually just sliding away. Ooh. Caught him low there, but I'm gonna carry on. Cool technique, doubled up on that kick. Yep. Side kick right through the top. <laughs> hey, Insignar has been in the game for a while. He knows he gets at least one. Crafty veteran, <laughs> crafty veteran. Insignaris misses on a big right hand there. But again, he's the one walking forward. He's the one setting the tone. And there's no return from Escobar on those big movements. When, he, when Insignaris does throw big, Escobar's got to capitalize and make it count. Oh, nice right hand there from Insignaris. It just seems to me that all the best strikes are being landed by Insignaris. And I don't know what the judges are seeing, if they're seeing it the same way we are. Leaping me there. <laughs> Didn't get it up very high, but it worked because as he came down, he landed that right hand. It's a really great tactical battle where we see where Emmanuel Escobar is at. Obviously the debut, coming off of a successful amateur career. Make no mistake, head coach of a gym. That is a very, very hard task. But hey, lands with a check left right there. And listen, I mean, coaching does increase your skill level, there's no question about it, because you're being forced to properly explain how techniques are done and to demonstrate it. And I think that really does help your own game as well. One minute, 10 oh, seconds oh, remain. Oh, oh, Escobar opening up. Maybe, you know, a minute remaining to say, let's let's get it done. We saved it all for this. Jonathan Insignaris is cut open right now. Some blood pouring down that left eye. Escobar with 60 seconds left. Time to leave it all in. Oh, big right hand. Escobar I mean, trying to come alive here. Again, he's had some moments, but I just feel like the volume and the better strikes have been from Escobar. That is a lot of blood coming down from Jonathan Insignaris, though. Yeah, you do see the damage now for sure. 30 seconds left. Emmanuel Escobar shoots a takedown. Body lock. Can't quite get the action to the ground. though, spinning on the feet. And Insignaris stays upright. 20 seconds. Time for a Hail Mary blow. Big shots right there in the pocket. Emmanuel Escobar oh. connects with the right hand. Nice right hand there. Final 10. Escobar has one big shot that connected. Five seconds. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Bit of a sneaky blow right at the end there from the youngster. Well, trying first to of all, trick the veteran. Don't high five somebody with five seconds left in the fight. I'm just going to throw that out yeah. there, right? But uh, yeah, be careful because you might get a, a cheap shot in there. I think that was a little bit of a cheap shot, but hey, all, all fair. So take a look at some of that action here from round number three. Listen, I think this is a tricky one for the judges. I really do. I think that first round was a clear and cigars round for me. But round two and round three, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Because again, I felt like Insignaris was the one that had these bigger moments like that. The nice right hand escorted. The Escobar's just volume wasn't quite enough, but he did get a lot of damage there late. You saw the blood streaming down. I'm really intrigued to see which way the judges go on this. It's certainly a power differential, and, you know, it's one of those moments where 30 seconds left in a fight where it is so closely contested. Takedowns, is that the highest fight IQ move you could make? Clearly, Emmanuel Escobar believes his pro debut is going to come up with a win. Jonathan Insignaris, there, he's waving his finger. He says no. Yeah, I, look, I, I, you know, climb the cage. I get it. It was a nice performance, and I, I would not be shocked if the judges award him two and three and he takes on the victory. But I would also not be shocked if one of those rounds doesn't go his way. Is, and if, if round one was a clear Insignaris round, then Insignaris finger wave is correct. You know, it obviously it all just falls back onto the criteria that which the judges are uh, operating on. My personal metric, I would say, the more consistent uh, fighter was Jonathan Insignaris. Large parts of the round, he was controlling. He was landing the better shots. I would say that when Escobar connected, bigger blows. Obviously, there was a laceration on Insignaris, uh, but I, I, it's hard for me to reward that over the body of work that Insignaris did over the 15 minutes. I'm looking over at the scoring table as they're adding up the yeses and the waves. <laughs> and, uh, 
They're taking a second yeah, with it. So. Got a couple TI-84s out. Uh, They're you know? really trying to crunch the numbers, John. It looks like uh, we have everything totaled up. I'm intrigued by this one. I really am. I'm intrigued by this one. Big Either way, you cut the cake. Whoever walks home to victor, Emmanuel Escobar, clearly some areas of improvement that the team can address and, uh, and rectify moving forward. Again, 7-1 as an amateur. This is his pro debut. There's a very long career left for Escobar to, to close those holes. And look, you know, everybody wants the quick finishes, but 15 minutes of experience is valuable as well. So. Senora, si Against the head coach. I got to keep mentioning it. It's so impressive. Jonathan Insignares! Emmanuel Escobar clearly very shocked by that decision, but Jonathan Insignares, the victor on short notice over the youngster. Highly touted competitor in Emmanuel Escobar comes up short in the debut against the head coach himself. Well, I understand. You can see the frustration on Escobar's face, and I get it, right? Because he was never really in trouble. He, he, he was clearly comfortable at all times, but I think when he goes back and watches this, He's going to see maybe there were some moments that volume output. Uh, I'd be really interested to know what our Spanish language counterparts had <laughs> scored as well. We'll have to ask them afterwards how they scored it. Uh, obviously, uh, Insignaris felt comfortable with it. Escobar thought it was controversial, but I, I got to be honest, man, I think we kind of foreshadowed it there. Um, I, I think that volume just wasn't quite enough in some spots. Eh, 